Hi everybody, Sam B here. It is May 24th, oh my goodness, it is May 24th. Um, but I just wanted to pop in and do a little bit of a podcast. Not a huge podcast, just like a little check-in. Um, last time I came on, I was telling you guys about um, these bats that I got. Uh, and so like, if you want to reference the previous video, I'll put a little clip in real quick. I am planning to do something where I use this bat. This bat. <laughs> this bat. This bat. And uh, this bat, all in one project. <laughs> so I bought, a, I bought a few bats. Queen Bee had said, oh, you can buy one. And you know, I was a little inebriated, but um, but anyways, those bats, I spun up Queen Bee spun one too. So just like a little bit of a recap. Um, we went to Maryland Sheep and Wool and we got some, and I should probably stop touching the table because then it makes a tripod shake and that's probably not great. I don't know. Anyways, uh, we, we were at Maryland Sheep and Wool cause we're vendors there and, uh, Melanated Boho Bay is there as well, and she, oh gosh, is it Bay or Babe? Okay, now I'm messing it up. I, like, every time I'm like, it's this one, don't say the other one, but then I always say, I feel like I said the wrong one. Anyways, Amanda, I always see her name, like, in one big thing on Instagram, so I'm like, you know, whatever. I'm pretty sure it's Bay. Anyways, Melanated Boho Babe, Amanda, um, makes these beautiful bats, and um, after I podcasted the next day, I just spun up all my singles and started plying. So, um, for some of you, you don't know about spinning yarn. So you can spin yarn on a spinning wheel or on a drop spindle. Um, a lot of people have been doing electric spinning wheels lately and I spun mine on an electric spinning wheel. It was, it's a Spinolution Firefly, um, that I've had for... Ooh, like probably a decade now, um, about a decade now. And the wheel's got a few kinks in it, but um, my other wheel, so I have two spinning wheels, my first spinning wheel ever. And this was kind of, I guess I should just go into the history of it. So, because I haven't talked about spinning in a hot minute. So my first spinning wheel is was a Kromsky Minstrel. I still have it, I still love it. Um, one complication with Kromsky uh, versus the spin illusion. Well, one thing that I'm, I'm not crazy about is you have to oil your wheel. That's not necessarily a problem. Um, I don't hate doing it, but if I'm spinning crazy yarn or I'm trying to really fill up my bobbin, sometimes uh, the yarn will get caught in between the bobbin, which is what you spin onto if you're new to spinning, um, and the connection to your orifice hook. So, and your flyer, that's the thing that wraps the yarn around. I should just bring a spinning wheel out. Anyways, um, yeah, so sometimes I get oil on my yarn, which isn't good. And the oil that you use is like, I think it's just like regular, like WD-40 or something. Um, and yeah, so I've been spinning on my spin illusion. Uh, Queen Bee usually spins on her Queen Bee Spin Illusion wheel. Um, that was like, that's an actual model. I think they have a King Bee now too. Uh, but the Queen Bee is like a nice little compact. It folds down and is like sewing machine sized. Uh, my electric wheel, my Firefly is about this big. Um, and I'm gonna put in some footage of me spinning too at the end of the video, or maybe I'll just do voiceovers. If I'm doing voiceovers and like cutting in and out, I don't know. I don't know how fancy I'm going to get without editing this video. But um, yeah, so we have been spinning recently. Queen Bee's been spinning a lot, but Sen Bee has also been spinning on her and she has a Banes wheel. Um, I don't know if it comes with like a model, but she's had that wheel for like almost 20, almost 20 years, I think. No, 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 no. We started spinning and like 
2009, so like 15 years she's had that wheel and I've had my menstrual for 15 years. Uh, we have several wheels. We have like a Spinolution Mach 2 or 3 uh, as well because we used to retail um, Spinolution wheels, but we don't do that anymore because it's just, it's too much. Um, but anyways, I do like the Spinolution wheels if you are familiar with spinning because they have just a hook. So a lot of times on a spinning wheel, you'll feed your yarn as you're spinning it into uh, an orifice uh, hole, basically, like just a little hole and your yarn will go through there and then onto the flyer and then it'll wrap it onto your bobbin. Um, for Spinolution, they don't have a hole, they just have a hook that you just hook your yarn onto a little bit more like a drop spindle type style and that allows you to spin crazy bulky yarns a lot easier. So Queen Bee spun up this beauty. This isn't one of the bags she got at Marilyn Sheep and Wool and I don't know why I won't focus. This is one that we got, we had ordered online. She had ordered online and she plied it with our Lux Block Sock uh, yarn base. So that's something that we have in the shop, but we had cones of it and I had decided to ply mine like that. And she just, did, she did such a good job. Look at how cute and coily and textured this yarn is. Like, what the heck? Can it stop trying to focus on my face? I wanted to focus on this. Anyways, you see all those cute colors? So all of those cute add-ins, that's all the bat that um, Amanda did. But this yarn is so cute and Queen Bee did all of, did all of that. So um, this is kind of more of, I kind of wanted to spin mine a little bit more like this, but I have a problem because I long draw my yarn. And one thing that I will say is that if you are not a spinner and you're watching this and you're like, you're saying all these terms that I'm not familiar with, um, maybe I'll do like a spinning like video telling people about, you know, kind of teaching you guys about spinning. Um, one thing is that you can short draw or long draw your wool. So that's how short or long you feed your wool into your like before it you let it spin so it's called drafting so when you take your big clump of wool you have to draft it into the thickness that you want your yarn to be your ending yarn and when you draft it i like to draft long draw a lot of times it's just how i do it um Queen B does short draw and that'll create two completely different types of yarn because it lets uh, air into the spin differently and lets the yarns, the strands of wool interlock differently too. So as you can see, mine is a little airier and fluffier. Here, I'll show you guys something, uh, one that's not as... Ruben, stop crying, honey. He wants to go out on the deck. Let me go and let him out real quick. I let one dog out and brought one in. Hi, Peach. <laughs> Peach wanted to say hi. She needs water. I need to probably put water out on the deck for them, but Queen Bee and Sun Bee are out there right now, so I will do that after I film and we're out hanging out out there, but say hi, Peach. Hi, Peach. Real quick, intermission is Peach did have, um, IMHA, I guess she still has it since it's a chronic illness, uh, that's immune something, uh, anemia basically. So she's got autoimmune anemia, but she's in remission. Uh, a couple years ago, she almost died, <laughs> but she's, uh, and I am using my, I am using my AirPods, so we're struggling a little bit, but she's doing, um, so much better now. She's doing fine. She's off all Wow, that, that's, I don't know how that happened. She's off all her medication now, and yeah, yeah, and she's beautiful and happy. Go on, go get some water. Go get some water. Uh, so, so if you hear tapping around, that's, that's her. Anyways, so you can see that this yarn is a lot more puffy. One strand is not. That's the uh, flock sock ply that I did. That's the white that runs all the way through it, and then the part that I did spin is very fluffy compared to how tightly spun. And I'm not just talking about the coils, I'm talking about part of the thing is, is you can make those coils by spinning your single strand very tightly. So um, Senbi 
also spun some yarn and hold on let me see if I can fix the settings on this so it's not being annoying okay hopefully hopefully that helps uh Sen B spun this beautiful skein of yarn using um I want to say it's Tarhi oh gosh yeah it doesn't feel like BFL feels like Tarhi I'm pretty sure this is Tarhi um, and this is actually our top that she spun with. And I don't know why the locking is, it's locking on my face so, it's locking on my face so annoyingly. So usually it'll let me show you guys the yarn while keeping me in the background, but hopefully it's showing you guys. You see how hers is a little bit more loosely spun. Like when you think of a sock yarn, you might think of it a little bit tighter spun than this. Um, she was trying to spin a sock yarn for my wool mittens uh, sock spin along that she was doing. And my wool mitten, Carrie, she is wonderful. She has a uh, beautiful farm in Michigan, in the mitten. And she has Corydale, I know for sure. And now I'm blanking on the other, I think she has another breed too that she raises. Um, but she is darling and she does all kinds of videos on spinning. So if you are interested in spinning, you can, uh, and knowing more about it, or you love spinning and you just want another podcast to follow that likes to talk about spinning, you can do that. But anyway, so these are Sun Bee and Queen Bee's yarns that they did. They're absolutely beautiful. And I'm so jealous of this one. And I wanted her to spin Queen Bee to spin all of her bats like this. Sen Bee did a beautiful job. Like this would make a beautiful shawl or something. I don't think it'll be good socks, but she didn't blend it with anything either. And a lot of times you want a sock yarn. And you may notice this when you are buying sock yarn from Indie Dyers. A lot of times finding 100% wool sock yarn is very hard. A lot of times you'll have a blend and all of our sock yarn is blends. Even our Lux Flock sock is a blend. They will have nylon or silk in there. And that is to help with durability. Otherwise you will get holes in your socks very, very easily. So um, while well, we love natural fibers and we'll, we have our bubble sock and our butter sock bases and those have silk in them to give them strength, um, as well as our Lux Flock sock, which is from our own flock, that also has silk in it to give it strength. Um, you know, otherwise nylon, but the thing is, is that it does, it, it will, you know, you don't wanna knit a whole pair of socks and then they don't hold up. So that's the thing. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys <laughs> the yarn that I dyed, um, or not dyed, <laughs> Spun, sorry. It's a day. It's a day, my friends. Um, so <laughs> I spun these. Aren't they cute? Uh, I am very, very happy with them. I will show them up close. Let's make sure it's actually focusing. And I am just so happy with them. Um, I did, and my AirPod fell out. I still haven't found a solution to this. Um, I did spin them so that they would kind of have this lump and bump effect. And you can see it like in here. And all of these bats were different. Like they had different add-ins to them. So you can see some of them have less uh, like chunks of wool or little strands of things that hang out. Uh, this bat had a lot of interesting stuff in there. You can kind of see it had these little chunks of right here, like yarns in there and also locks of wool. This one had a lot of wool locks and you can kind of see like down here, they're hanging out. So these are what you would call art yarns. This is also an art yarn. So they are spun very fun, very interesting. Um, I originally wanted to do a sweater, a chunky sweater with these and kind of maybe do a bit of a fade effect, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure now what exactly I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. Oh, sorry. I'm going to turn it off 
uh, cinematic. Cinematic helps a little bit in some ways, but it also is annoying in others. So that's better. Let me show you these yarns again. So you can see this one's coily and fun and it's cute. And this has a lot of cute little add-ins in there. Queen Bee spun this one. The Bat is from Amanda from Melanated Boho Babe. And Sen Bee spun this beauty. And my exposure is kind of blowing it out a little bit. I'll uh, put in the other videos or at the end some more that show it a little bit better but this is really cute and moody and I don't know if she's gonna keep it or try to sell that one um and then these are the ones I spun so you can kind of see the color isn't showing up great but you can kind of see the effect so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them uh I had a great time spinning and so I am going to be spinning a lot more I am going to keep spinning probably on my on my Spinolution Firefly just because it is easier to do these like art yarns back in the day um and oh what I was saying is that it is good I wanted to say this it is good to learn how to spin yarn um if you're a knitter even if you don't actually spin it if you just watch videos and learn about the spinning process that will help you understand yarn and how to choose yarns for a project better um if you feel like that's something you struggle with is what is a good yarn to use for a certain project or if this yarn will hold up well in this project you don't want to pick something that's going to pill too much in a sweater um that might otherwise be great for a hat or um a cowl or a shawl uh because it doesn't get a lot of friction like in the armpits and sleeves and stuff like that so that is something that you can learn a lot of times um it's referred to woolen and worsted spun when a mill creates these spins and creates either that long draw effect or that short draw effect. Uh, it also depends on how they, I think, it also depends on how they combed their fiber. So a bat made with top, which is what these are, uh, they will spin a lot more uh, easy to do whatever you want with. Top is a lot easier to do whatever you want with and bats kind of lend themselves to be spun in a certain way that's different. A lot of times that's more of a short draw effect um, and that'll give you a little bit more of a rounder yarn and long draw will give you more of an airy yarn that's full of uh, a little bit more air. Another good example of a long draw yarn, two good examples in our shop would be um, our Coquette Sock and also Sasquatch Erin are very much more of a long draw and that's because Coquette Sock is a Corydale wool and that's another thing is the type of wool you use. Uh, that will also help you figure out how to spin it better. You can, there are some people who are like, oh, you've got to spin it the, the correct way. A wool needs to be spun a correct way and you have to spin a certain way to you know, get that wool to do what you want. A lot of times people, when I first started spinning and getting into the wool scene with Queen Bee and Sen Bee, 100% um, alpaca yarns are were very um, discouraged and spinning them were discouraged and making projects out of them was discouraged because alpaca doesn't have a lot of memory to it. And that's how much the yarn is going to remember how to look like how it was spun and stay in the project you knit or crochet it or weave it into without um, stretching out and staying stretched out. But there are ways to spin it and make it have memory. Um, so I mean that's totally up to you and you can spin it however you want honestly and if you knit it or crochet it in the right project like cable knits, um, like if you do an almost entirely cable knit project with with alpaca it will it will keep its memory um because it it lends it lends itself to that so i hope that this was a little bit educational and fun um i'm going to be ending it now because i oh, i didn't want to do a super long video and i have a bunch of clips to show you of me actually spinning and i'm going to put those in and show you some more glamour shots of the yarn looking good and all of that fun stuff. So 
thanks for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And um, if you liked this video, please thumbs up, uh, subscribe, leave a comment. If you want more content like this uh, about spinning um, or you're like, oh, get back to the yarn and knitting and stuff, you know, just leave a comment. Like honestly, leave a comment. We also have our Patreon, which $3 a month is a small way to support our business. And it also lets you have early access to updates, behind the scenes content, um, all of that stuff. And then we have other tiers as well. And uh, I forgot to do this on our the last podcast because it had been so long since I did it. I forgot it was something I, I was supposed to do. But at the end, you will see a little shout out to all of our Goat Bee, Sheep Bee, and Llama Bee tiered patrons. Thank you so much for your support and happy crafting. Bye. And Beach and I want to thank you for getting caught in the wool with us. Yeah, caught in the wool. Cutting the wool! Oh. <laughs> Bye!